sold my house in January. I just realized that I was spending all this money to maintain, you know, a certain kind of lifestyle. And that was getting in the way of me having time and money to, to spend on doing what my real passion is, which is traveling. I just noticed as I started selling all my things and downsizing that it was like this weight lifted off me. And I just, I'm so much happier now and more content with relatively few possessions. And um, of course, being in a van and traveling around and living out of a van forces, forces that on you. Um, but it was something I was already ready for. And um, so the whole kind of transition to, to living out of a van came very natural. My name is uh, Shane Jordan, and uh, this is my 82 Westphalia here. I've always been into cars, and for a while when I was younger and making good money, I decided to check out classic cars. And I wanted to do it as cheaply as possible, so I bought a, uh, an old Volkswagen Beetle. When I uh, bought the Beetle and started to learn how to fix it, I came across this whole community of Volkswagen owners. And I saw that some people had these things called Westphalias. And they were basically compact uh, camper vans. And everything just kind of folds out like a Swiss Army knife. It just blew my mind, just the engineering, how it was a kind of a classic car, but you could still use it. They're not garage queens. People actually still use these cars for their intended purpose, which is kind of rare for a classic car. I bought it for $4,500 on Craigslist in Flagstaff, Arizona. And I drove it from Flagstaff back to Los Angeles and uh, died in my driveway when I got it home. Most people probably would have been kind of discouraged at that point, but this vehicle got me through the middle of the desert because it could have died anywhere in between, and it got me all the way back home and then died. So it was kind of like an instant bond between us. Like, yeah, this thing broke, but it, it broke in my driveway. So we were friends after that. Yeah. The culture is one of like the, definitely one of the coolest things about having one of these. This is a ticket to like a whole community of people and everybody in this community for the most part is into cars, a little bit geeky with their cars, a little bit outdoorsy, and so whenever I meet somebody that has one of these, I know that we're gonna kind of have some stuff in common, and uh, it's, it's really a fun community of just really good people. Living the van life is having the freedom to take yourself, all of your things, and your home with you to all the amazing places that you've always wanted to go to. The classic American road trip is mom and dad throw the kids in the van and take off for Yellowstone, right? That's like, or Yosemite, or one of the big national parks. This gives you the ability to take your entire home or apartment with you to those places. And that's really like what van life when done right, is all about. So on this side of the van, on the outside, starting at the back, got a, it's a like a heavy duty CB radio antenna. This is so you can talk to your buddies when you're at a cell phone range. Everybody kind of has a CB and, and can talk when you're all camping together. Um, this is an external power port for plugging in things to the outside of the van, like an external shower, or that kind of stuff. This is a, a panel that a company makes that uh, replaces the rear window. So it's metal, and the cool thing about that is you can mount stuff like uh, this ax to the outside. Just comes in handy when you're camping. This is a, a mountain decal that I had made for the side. Um, down along the side, these are called rock sliders. And that's uh, so, uh, you know, big heavy rocks and stuff. Hit this instead of hitting and damaging the, the side panels of your van when you're doing some off-roading. Um, and then this here is a, a Fiamma uh, awning. And this, uh, this cranks out, comes out about, about way far and attaches to the side of the van. That gives you shade and protects you when it's raining so you can still kind of hang out outside the van in the rain. And then up here you've got uh, external floodlights. So when you're camping in the woods, you can, you can turn that on and see what's outside. And then we'll move to the front. 
And we have this, uh, these are custom light bar brackets and a 52 inch curved uh, LED light bar. And then on the front, um, these are replacement headlights. These are LED headlights, um, LED interior lights, um, high beams. You got your high lift jack. Um, because the van sits a little bit higher, um, you want to have the ability to still change a tire with the van, so you need a high lift jack, which gives you extra, extra lift. Um, and then more, more lights. We got a lot of light on here, so don't have a problem seeing at, at night. And then on the front at the top, that's a 50 watt solar panel. And then on this side, it's, I had a custom compass decal made for there. And then I have a surfboard rack built into the, the custom roof rack that I had made. Um, I had this fabricated down in Mexico. Uh, another floodlight, a uh, ladder for getting up to get the surfboard down. Um, and then up top, have it so you can adjust and angle the solar panel on the, this is a 100 watt panel, and you can angle this up into the sun. So as the sun is moving throughout the sky, you can always make sure you're getting direct sunlight to it. And then here you have your hookup boxes, which come on all Westphalias. Um, this one here, it used to be city water, so you could hook up a hose and just kind of run the faucet. Um, but I've converted it to be um, onboard air. So what that, so I have an air compressor on there, and then you can jack into here with the air hose and then air up your tires. Um, so when you're going off road, a lot of times you'll want to let some air out of the tires. It gives you better grip off road. Um, and then you want to have the ability to air them back up again afterwards. Um, or if you get a flat tire or something like that. Pretty handy to have. Um, here is an external power so you can plug in if you're at somebody's house or at a campsite that has power and it'll charge all your batteries and electronics. And then this hook up here is to fill up your onboard water tank. And uh, you have a 13 gallon water tank with you. On this side, by the same company that made uh, the window replacement on the other side, it's the same kind of idea. Um, on this side, have a shovel for digging yourself out if you get stuck. And these are called Max Tracks. And what you do with these is if you get stuck in mud or sand, you stick these under the wheels and it gives you grip to get up out of whatever, whatever you're stuck in, hopefully. That's the idea. And then around the back, these are, these are swing outs. So these mount to the bumper and to the top of the rear hatch. And that allows you to still open the rear hatch. And then I've got storage for tools and some spare parts up there, all my sockets and wrenches. And then this right here, of course we've got the, got the world map, which reflects my world travel ambitions with the van. And also in the back here is a uh, 60 watt solar panel. So there's a total of 210 watts of solar on the roof. These red things here, these are extra gas cans. They have three gallons each. So I have a total of nine gallons of extra gas. This yellow one is for diesel. And what this runs to is a diesel furnace inside it, um, S-Bar diesel furnace. And that's the fuel tank for that. So when you're camping in cold places, you have a uh, furnace at night. So you're nice and toasty. And of course, a spare tire. And over the spare tire, this is called a trash -a This is basically just a big, big sack where you can put garbage and that kind of stuff to keep it out of the van. Over here on this side, this is uh, by a company called Front Runner, and this is a jerry can. Um, and what's cool about this is you use it for water, and it has a spigot down at the bottom. So you can uh, use this to wash your hands or dishes or something outside, um, which is pretty nice. This is a, uh, a aluminum storage box, and what I use this for is to keep my, well, a little bit of an angle so it's coming open, but this is where I keep uh, a lot of my tools with me and some spare parts and then I use the top for my firewood 
So I've always got some firewood with me. And now let's continue on the inside. So coming inside the van now, um, start right here. This is your porta potty here. So if you're try not to use that, but if you're in a place where, uh, like a city, for example, and all the stores are closed, where you normally go and use the facilities, you have that as an emergency backup, which is pretty nice. Also use it for storing a lot of the uh, some of the curtains and that kind of stuff. Um, behind here is uh, behind the front passenger seat. Um, it's called a catch-all. A uh, guy made this um, in Guatemala when he was traveling to South America. Um, he stopped in Guatemala and teamed up with a, uh, a leather company there, and they uh, they made these just for these vehicles, which was pretty cool. It helped him to uh, fund his trip. Um, so that goes on the back of the passenger seat. Over here, um, what this is, is under here you have your sink, which goes from the 13-gallon water tank. And then here you have a two-burner propane stove. Keep this rag here so it doesn't rattle when you're moving. Down here, have a electric fridge and freezer, which is pretty cool. You can have ice cream in the middle of the desert, which is kind of a novelty. Um, and then down here, um, this is storage. We keep a lot of the pots and pans. And up here is like the, the cutlery draw. Um, up here is a custom spice rack that I had made for it. Or keep uh, different things. Nothing really too interesting. Um, custom LED light strip down here. Um, back here is the, use these as like the pantry and food storage, dry food in these two drawers. On the inside of these windows, these custom window replacements, is what's called a molly grid, which um, is what they use in the military um, for attaching bags and tools to like army backpacks and stuff. Um, and so you can go to an army surplus store and get all these little pouches and stuff that I use for first aid and you know keeping uh, scissors and that kind of stuff. Um, up here we've got controls for a fan which is really nice. I put it right here so that when you're sleeping over here, get a nice fan blowing on you. And for the light switch here, this is your kitchen table up here. Normally this is mounted down here, um, but I don't use the kitchen table every day and it's kind of in the way when it's over here. So there's a company that sells these brackets that allows you to mount it um, up over your head and you only take it down when you need it, which is really handy. Um, this is your downstairs that pulls out like this, like that. This is a memory foam mattress topper that I use. Makes it a lot more comfortable, but this is uh, just a little bit smaller than a full size um, bed. And this is, where, this is where we sleep. Back here, these are sliding cabinets. This is where I keep uh, a lot of my clothes. And also, up here is where a lot of clothes are stored. Underneath the bench seat, um, have a um, 100 amp hour lithium uh, deep cycle battery. Um, that, this is what powers all the camping electronics. So when you're parked um, and the car's not running, everything is running off of this battery. So you don't, you don't run down your main battery. So the last thing you'd want is to be camping somewhere in the middle of nowhere and then not be able to start your car afterwards because you ran the battery down. So, and then here we have a, a 12, uh, 12 inch subwoofer. Um, here is a power inverter so that we can plug in normal, normal people electronics and not car electronics. So if you've got like an electric shaver or something like that, um, or my Dyson, portable Dyson vacuum cleaner. So everything van related is kind of got to be, you know, small in size and portable and, and battery powered, ideally. And uh, I'm not sponsored by Dyson, but if you live in a van, you're gonna want one of these. These things are amazing. Let's say uh, you have a couple friends over for dinner and we're all hanging out in the van 
Um, obviously, you've got, you can fit a couple people on the bench seat there. Um, somebody could probably sit here and there. Um, but you want to be comfortable, and this is kind of like the common, the common area. You've got your table out, somebody's cooking. Um, you can swivel this seat around here. And this is, this makes for like a nice little living room arrangement. You can put your feet up on here. It's kind of like your, your Lazy Boy recliner. So it's, it's almost like you're at home uh, watching the tube. This here is, it's a steel storage box and it's super heavy duty and secure. And this is where you keep a lot of your valuable electronics and laptops and stuff. One thing that people are concerned about when they're living out of a van is, is somebody breaking in and stealing. You can't necessarily prevent that. You can do the best you can to secure the van, but once they're inside, you can make it a lot tougher for them to get your valuables, like your laptops and iPads and stuff by putting them in something like this and of course you can get through anything with enough time but you're going to have a heck of a time getting through this heavy duty steel uh, lockbox and it also has a couple handy cup holders in the front um, that's my cb radio there and then let's move up to the dash so on the passenger side up front um, you've got this handy I love this, even though I don't use it that much. It's like a little map desk that flips out. You can also put a laptop there, which is pretty cool. Um, I've got this little plant that I keep with me. Try to keep them alive best I can. So far, I seem to be doing a pretty good job. These are cup holders that flip out. Of course, you got your cigarette adapter to keep your iPad charged. And up here, you've got these little flexible lights. So if you're reading at night in your Lazy Boy recliner, you've got a little little light that goes on you and your book. And up top, I had all this reupholstered and carpeted. And the cool thing about that is that you can use these handy dandy um, Velcro pockets uh, for sticking whatever in your gum or uh, lipstick or chapstick. On the inside of the door, this is all custom, custom made. Replaces what was here originally, which was kind of cardboard. And I've added all these storage pockets on the door. Okay, on this side, um, obviously got the radio, we've got our air conditioning controls. This is a custom gauge I put in that gives me outside air temperature. So we can see it's a balmy 91 here in New York City. And then here we have our Speed Hut gauges. So I've been really happy with these gauges. They're way better than the 1982 technology cluster that I had in here before. So if you push on this button, Got the time, which is kind of nice to know, although it's still on California time. Um, the, I believe that's the elevation. Yeah, that's the elevation. You've got a digital speedometer. You've got a compass. You've got your maximum speed. Um, I definitely did not hit 106 miles an hour. Um, zero to 60 time. Also, it does not apply to a van again. This is one of the slowest vehicles ever made. I do not use that. Quarter mile, another thing I will never use in this van, but if you have a really fancy sports car, that would be kind of cool to have. And then, of course, your trip gauge. One of the interesting things about this vehicle that makes it kind of unique and special is that it's rear engine. So, Porsches, a lot, most Porsches, um, and a lot of the old Volkswagens, I think almost all the old Volkswagens, bugs and buses have their engines in the back. Most cars obviously have their engines in the front, so that's kind of something unique and different about these. Um, and one of the things that I like about this van is how kind of quirky and different the design is. Um, so this is how you get to the engine. This does not have a stock Volkswagen motor in it. And what a lot of people do when they're souping up these old Vanagans is they do an engine swap on them. Either diesels or Subaru motors like this one. The stock motor that I had in here put out 67 horsepower. This one puts out about 165 horsepower. It sounds pretty cool. This funny looking thing is a fire suppression device. So anybody who's ever owned an old Volkswagen knows that they have a tendency to burst into flames. And the reason for that is they have a lot of fuel lines that are old now and haven't been replaced. 
Um, in the older buses, the gas tank was right behind the engine there. So if the gas tank leaked or anything, gas would get on the engine and burst into flames and then go up. So what this does, if there were to be a fire, um, it heats up this to the point where it blows out and automatically extinguishes the fire. Which is pretty, pretty nifty. It's cheap insurance. I always think about someday when I'm an old man and I look back on my life, what are going to be the things that I remember? Are they going to be all the silly, stupid things I bought? Or are they going to be the experiences that I had? And I came to realize that, that life is about making great experiences because those are the things that matter for the people and, and the places you see and, and not about buying silly trinkets and working your life away just to buy more silly trinkets.